Hey guys, so I recently saw that Fantano and the guys from the NFR podcast made a video where they ranked their top 10 hip-hop albums of the 2010s. So I've seen a lot of discussion about this online over the past week or however long it's been since it dropped, and I thought I'd come on here real quick and share my rankings with you guys. At number 10, I'm going to have to put Bottomless Pit by Death Grips. Uh, this is an album that I don't often see people put in these kinds of lists. It kind of gets overshadowed by the Money Store. Now, you will see the Money Store later on this list, kind of a spoiler, but I think the Bottomless Pit is just unmatched and it's just raw energy. It's less pop-focused than the Money Store, so I understand its lack of popularity, um, but I think it's still a fantastic album in Death Grip's discography. At number nine, I'm going to put We Got It From Here, uh, Thank You For Your Service by A Tribe Called Quest. Now, this is an album that had a lot to live up to relative to a, tri uh, a Tribe Called Quest discography and what had already been out at this time. And I think that this album, the best compliment I can give it is that it lives up to that. Um, it had huge shoes to fill and it's maybe not their best album, but it's really close. And number eight, I got to put Daytona by Pusha T, um, a really short project, um, but just so concise and, and tight and really um, kind of shows Pusha T as a different kind of artist than we've seen in the past, um, kind of just focusing on his rapping ability and just getting that across um, in such a tight way on this track list. And he does incredible on every song, all the beats are just perfect, and every time there's a guest on this album, especially Shake, Kanye, Rick Ross, um, absolutely fantastic project. And number seven, it's a very similar album, it's Kid See Ghosts by Kanye and Kid Cudi. Um, People have been talking about this album a lot, but it's, again, much like Daytona, very short track list, um, and you see some rare moments where both of them are just going at pure rapping ability and other songs where they're going for more of, like, an emotional, like, melodic sort of vibe, and I think it's just such a great album that it is so short in its track list, but it demonstrates a lot of versatility in these artists. And number six, I have Taboo by Denzel Curry. Um maybe his best album, but he's been just delivering incredibly consistent projects since this album. Um, and this album it just has so many incredibly memorable moments, and I really like the kind of, how, how it's three discs on the album, and how they progress like sonically into more of an intense sound as the album goes on. And number five, I have Yeezus, um, an album that I hold a lot of respect for because of how it got made and how it's kind of a victory lap and proving that Kanye can make whatever he wants to make. Um, I really like Yeezus for that statement and just the incredibly experimental, harsh sound of the album. And number four, I have Kanye again with The Life of Pablo. Um, such an incredibly cool concept for an album and the story behind the album cover and the track list is really neat. Um, something I might do a video on at some point, but The Life of Pablo just has bangers front to back, so many cool emotional moments, so many just great demonstrations of his rapping ability, and just not a moment on this album is forgettable. At number three, I have The Money Store. Now, this is my favorite Death Grips album, um, and it seems to be a lot of people's favorites, but I, I still hold it in incredibly high regard just because of how creative the track list is. All of the songs are just so different while providing this like vibe that I had never really heard in a song before. And so it definitely needs to grow on you. Um, if you're one of those people that's not into Death Grips, I totally get it. But this album will be your best chance at getting into them. At number two, I've put Good Kid Mad City. Um, I do prefer this album to To Pimp a Butterfly because To Pimp a Butterfly is such like a huge conceptual, like, it has way more to say than Good Kid Mad City, for sure. And I think To Pimp a Butterfly is probably the best written album ever made. Um, but I, I do prefer Good Kid Mad City because, you know, it's a much easier listen. It's something that really has me coming back more often than To Pimp a Butterfly. I feel like with T-Pab, you want to, like, it requires a lot more of your focus, whereas Good Kid Mad City is still an incredibly compelling story that you can really get behind without having to like listen, read along to the lyrics while you're listening. Um, now, Good Kid Mad City has probably like three or four out of my top five Kendrick songs of all time on it. Um, like I said, the story is just incredibly compelling and it's really unique how Kendrick made like such a 
heavy, dense album with that much pop appeal on it. And at number one, not a surprise to most of you guys, I'm sure, is My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Um, obviously, it's Kanye's best album. Everything from the concept of this album to the creation of it, every feature on it, of which there's a lot, just delivers their absolute best. Every song has just perfect instrumentals, and Kanye's rapping performances are like none other. I think there's not a single bad moment on this album. It is the closest I would get to calling an album literally perfect. All right, so that was just my quick ranking of my top 10 uh, hip-hop albums of the 2010s. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave uh, your top 10 down in the comments, and I'll catch you next time.